everybody for coming out to the, the great and the historic uh, O.C. Haley Boulevard. Uh, we will be joined by our council members uh, shortly. Uh, we have with us Cedric Grant, who's executive director of the Surgeon Water Board. Uh, our deputy mayor, uh, Jeff A. Bear, who is a CAO and our resilience officer. Uh, Adrian Celestine with the office, Louisiana Office of Community Development. Uh, Colonel Mark Jernigan, uh, director of public works. Linda Pompa, uh, who is the head of O.C. Haley Boulevard Merchants and Business Association. Uh, Jim Singleton, who is the chair uh, of NORA. Uh, and other business and community leaders who are with us uh, to talk about this very special uh, day. Um, first of all, let me make a couple of general comments. First of all, public safety uh, and uh, preparedness is our number one uh, priority. Uh, right now, uh, we have... Stacy, come on, please. Council Member Head. Um, right now, uh, I want the citizens of New Orleans just to be aware uh, that there is what is now called Invest 99 uh, that is in and around our area. It's about 134 miles uh, away from us. Uh, you can follow on the Weather Channel uh, what the trajectory looks like. We're not sure whether it's coming this way or not, but that's something that is causing us uh, to be aware and concerned. Uh, it's about 134 uh, hours away. Um, we are hoping that it's going to turn around or head up uh, the East Coast there is a distant possibility uh, that it might move into the Gulf, uh, but I just want to put everybody on alert uh, to begin to watch uh, and to prepare yourselves in the event that we have to worry about that. Um, we have a really great plan in place, but it really requires the people of the city of New Orleans to be ready and to be prepared in the event uh, that we have an event. We have been blessed in the last couple of years, knock on wood, uh, not to be challenged, but in the event that we are, uh, this is about being ready for it and being prepared. And uh, my team, along with the council, will keep uh, the people of the city informed as this matter uh, moves forward. So again, I just, I'd just i like uh, to alert the people of New Orleans to what's happening out there uh, so that you can be prepared and that we can do our job in the event, uh, unfortunately, that we're called upon uh, to do so. Uh, the second thing that I want to talk about is uh, what has happened to our brothers and sisters in Louisiana. I'm very thankful that the president uh, came to the area. President Obama, I think, has visited the state of Louisiana more than any president in the history of the country. He's been here seven times. Uh, every one of his cabinet secretaries has been here more times than we can count. Uh, when this storm happened, I know that Jay Johnson, who's the head of Homeland Security, was on the ground. Craig Fugate was on the ground. The federal response has been robust. However, uh, nobody in Louisiana should be confused. This was a massive event. It caused untold devastation to the people of Louisiana. Uh, the projections are still being um, figured out. We think there's somewhere upwards of 85,000 homes that have gotten hurt and or destroyed. Lots of folks in 20 parishes that have been declared disaster areas are in trouble. And the people of Louisiana um, know, because we've been through this many times, and the people of New Orleans understand better how long this recovery is going to be. So I'm really asking the people of New Orleans to remember how much people did for us when we were in our worst circumstances, and I'm asking everybody in the city of New Orleans through personal uh, finance, philanthropic, faith-based organizations to do everything we can to help our brothers and sisters in uh, South Central Louisiana dig out of this storm and actually rebuild their lives. They did this for us um, and we need to do that for them. The Red Cross is leaning forward. Uh, the Pay It Forward Fund has already distributed $40,000, uh, $10,000 increments to the, to the Red Cross, to another of different of folks that are doing well. I also want to thank all of our chefs uh, that have already served thousands and thousands of meals. Uh, and my guess is that for a very long period of time, they're going to need a lot of volunteer help. And, and hopefully um, we will uh, lean forward. As a city, we're doing everything that we can. Uh, the council members and the executive branch have really been working hard to make sure that our contacts across the state know that we are here and we're going to help them. Uh, and I want to continue to do that um, as uh, the need continues to get worse, not, not easier. Um, so with that, uh, I want to bring us to today's announcement, which is really exciting. First of all, everything in the city of New Orleans that has been a success has been the result of partnerships. And the people standing behind me uh, have been responsible for not only resurrecting um, this great street, but about 22 other sites in the city from Ferret Street to Oak Street. Uh, and this one in particular um, is really sweet. You can look behind us 
Uh, and you can see, if you think back to 2004, before the storm, about the condition that Aretha Castle Haley was in and the people that are standing behind me that said this community is really worth uh, investing in. Uh, it is really wonderful to be here. Now, I know we have a long way to go, but we are a long way away from where we were. And if it were not for the individuals that live in this area, the small business owners, the council members, all of the stakeholders that are standing behind me, we wouldn't be here today. I mean, at one time, this was the driest street commercial district. It was a long time ago, a very robust home to Jewish and Italian merchants, African-American doctors and insurance companies and German bakers. Um, everybody came here to shop. Uh, this street in Central City gave birth, as you know, to the modern civil rights movement. Um, it was later renamed in honor of civil rights pioneer Retha Castle Haley as a college student. She boycotted, she was one of the great leaders, uh, and she was honored with uh, this street being named after her. Um, as you know, as a young boy uh, growing up in this area, I served in the legislature when I was a lieutenant governor. Uh, one of the things that we spent a lot of time on was figuring out how to build back main streets across all of Louisiana. And at that time, the main street program was something that just dealt with main streets in rural Louisiana. Um, and with the work of a lot of people, we conceptualized something called Cultural Products District, where we waived sales taxes for investments in areas like this with the specific purpose of creating private sector incentives to rebuild streets like Ferret, Oak Street, or Retha Castle Haley. We were very fortunate in our timing because the city council itself, led by council member Head and other council members, were doing the same thing. And then when Katrina hit, private investment began to work in, philanthropic investment, and all of those things came together to produce the opportunity to actually rebuild this street. Uh, in partnership with the council, we have invested millions of dollars in infrastructure in this street. Down the street, Nora, uh, the new building is there. Uh, of course, the Ashe Cultural Center, thank you guys so much, have been anchoring this street for a long period of time and have been yelling into the wilderness for people to come in uh, and to partner with them. Uh, and you guys have done an incredible job. And as you look around you, uh, you now see this virtuous cycle of success beginning to take hold. There also was another very important decision that was made, and council member had to help lead this effort. Early, early on, right after Katrina, when we started spending recovery money, there was an argument about whether we ought to spend any money on street spending, as a council member may recall, but I remember this argument. And she is one of the people that stood up and said, you know, streetscapes are actually things that will help generate other investments. So the streetscapes that you see on Napoleon Avenue, the streetscapes that you see here, was a policy decision that was the right one that was made to make major investments. And now we have 24 massive investments in streetscapes all across the city that have, that have beautified it, made streetscapes easier for people to walk on, made biking a lot easier, and have helped make neighborhoods feel closer and part of a much larger effort. So I want to thank her uh, particularly for her work. And so today we're announcing a $1.85 billion investment in the streetscape for this particular area. Um, we think that this is going to be a six to nine month rebuild. What did I say? Um, Y'all don't want the billion? You know, it's something when the mayor of New talks in billions. That's a good, that's a good thing. Um, $1.85 million investment in the streets gave in six to nine months. It's going to add great value to what we already have. And uh, the other streetscapes, in case people are just worried about Harrison Avenue and Lakeview Reed Boulevard in New Orleans East, Claiborne Avenue and Lower Nine, which is beautiful. The Ferret Street streetscape is great. Um, and you see a lot going on at Tulane Avenue, and they really are ripping across the city. And it's making these, these areas much more walkable, much more personal, while at the same time being part of the global economy. So I want to thank everybody for all of their work. Um, none of this gets done, again, without partnerships, without long-term planning. Uh, Council member um, Singleton was reminding me that he actually was having this argument before we took office with the previous administration where they actually wanted to cut streetscapes out. But as a matter of course, it was a policy decision that was made that we've continued to double down on and invest in and it was the right one that has actually turned neighborhoods around and make New Orleans a more livable place that keeps us on pace with major cities like San Francisco, and other areas who have invested in this as well. So I commend this to all of you. I'm very thankful to each and every one of you that have worked so hard to make this a sex. Uh, Council Member Head, thank you for helping lead the effort um, many, many years ago. Uh, and I'd like to call her up for some comments to be followed by uh, Council Member Cantrell if she makes it here. Uh, but she sends her greetings if she does not. And then Cedric Grant, 
uh, Deputy Mayor Jeff Hebert, Adrian Celestine, and uh, Linda, and anybody else who wants to talk. So it would be great. Thank you all so much, and congratulations. This is an instructive moment. The way that government works well is drudgery, frankly. It takes tenacity, it takes people not deviating from a position, and it takes the hard work of a lot of different people. When the discussion of DCDBG dollars, the money that we got from the federal government, came up, everyone had their, frankly, many of them, wild visions for what we should spend the money on. This was prior to this administration, I can assure you. One of the things I would not deviate from was the importance of street state, streetscapes and the importance of traditional commercial corridors, O.C. Haley being one of the most important ones. That administration committed $2 million. Well, the mayor got mad at me at the time and took it down to $300,000. Uh, Councilman Singleton then lobbied and got that loosened so that it wasn't an absolute no. And then this mayor and his team pulled it all together and made it happen. So now we're back to almost $2 million being spent on this commercial corridor. It couldn't have happened without the day-to-day, -day, again, it's drudgery sometimes. Danny Galloway made sure it was moved forward, made sure that the ideas were going to be realistic, that we planned something we could afford. Nora continuing to invest in this commercial corridor. And again, the, the today is the feel-good moment but I want to make sure that people don't forget that most of this was done because of incremental and individual work by Colonel Jernigan, by Deputy Mayor, are you still Deputy Mayor Grant? By the, the, the guy who does everything, Grant, the entire team that the administration has, my colleague Councilmember Cantrell who took the baton and moved it forward and again continued to push in the same direction. I love these exciting field feel goods. I don't go to many ribbon cuttings, but because this one has taken 10 years and I felt like I pushed a boulder up the hill with my nose. Um, sometimes I would lose focus and then everybody else would take it over and this administration has really pushed it across the finish line. This is a, it, it's a, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm breathing a sigh of relief and almost, I'm frankly in disbelief that we are actually here today because it seemed like it was never going to happen. And it seems like it's so easy looking back, but it wasn't. And I want to thank all of the people who made this happen. Again, they never get the thanks. They are the worker bees behind the scenes. But the team that the, the mayor put together, the team that Nora put together, uh, the council member who took this on and pushed it forward, thank you to her and thank you to everybody who believed in this vision. And now we're going to have a great streetscape to continue with our traditional commercial corridor revitalization. Good morning. As the council member said, this is a collective effort of a whole bunch of people. Um, we got the charge to, to execute streetscapes when we have with over 20 of them all over town. In this particular instance, what we'll be doing here is partial removal of the neutral ground from Felicity and Martin Luther King. We'll install wider pedestrian refuges at intersections, um, ADA ramps all, all up and down, restriping the roadway to two travel from two travel lanes and parking lanes to one travel lane and bike lanes. Because more bike lanes. We've got over 100 Happy. miles in town. And we'll be installing rain gardens here. So we'll be, we'll be putting green up infrastructure here as well. And, and Increasing the landscaping and tree cutting, and then we'll come back and pave the road all for $1.85 billion. Uh, this has been a true collective effort working with the neighbors in, in the community. All kind of good ideas have, have reached us to this point. Um, the, the economic development folks are going to work with the businesses and try and help us all through this. We ask for your patience, as we, we do often, because we, we we're about to tear up everything. <laughs> but it'll be better in about eight months, and we will come back here and cut a ribbon. So, so, so we want to thank everybody for their participation. I'll be followed by Jeff Abel. Thank you. Thank you. I just really quickly just want to say a couple of things because this has been a collective effort. You build communities not just by building a street but building the businesses and the residents back. So just a real quick, 73 new units of affordable housing has come online in this area in the past several years. $4.2 million in direct investment in housing, $9.6 million leveraged with our, our partners in the community. Commercial investment, um, as, as the council member and the mayor talked about a minute ago, not just at North headquarters but the gap financing program that Nora has, uh, that Lin uh, Brenda here has led, 2.7 million in direct investment on this corridor, which includes Cafe Reconcile, the Franz building across the street, 
uh, Myrtle Banks, New Orleans Mission, and, and many others that has leveraged $34.5 million in investment uh, from uh, the private side. Uh, the last thing uh, that uh, I worked on to set up before I left Nora, and Brenda's continuing that on, is the Facade Renew program, and Melissa Lee uh, is here representing that program. This is modeled on best practices nationwide to bring back the smaller scale businesses along the community. So 18 projects along this corridor have been funded. Nine projects have been completed, including Ashe, a Primitivo restaurant uh, right behind us, uh, and several others, Majestic Mortuary, which is also right behind us. Um, counting for about $661,000 direct uh, facade investment on O.C. Haley, $733,000 million, uh, 733, leveraged uh, by the private sector, um, and $8 million leveraged total project investment through this program. So it's building the pieces of the street, the residents, the neighborhood together to bring this back in what, having been involved with this as well for about 11 years, starting with Ms. Carroll 11, 12 years ago, I also can't believe that we're finishing this, but it's a great day. Thank you. Adrian. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think the theme of the day is partnership. Um, one of the things that I've noticed as I try, as I drove in up OC Haley and looked around Central City is that our department at the state level has partnered with the city and Nora on many of these projects. More importantly, these projects, all most of them have involved some sort of a large amount of private investment as well. And it, this corridor and this area has been, <clears throat> excuse me, a perfect example of public-private partnerships working well together to revitalize a community. This particular project, I see it as almost a capstone of all of the investment we've done in this area to support the businesses that are along here with improved street design and landscaping. I want to thank, we have our HUD partners here. Raise your hand, HUD. I want to thank our HUD partners for supporting us over the last 10 years in revitalizing our city and our state after devastating hurricanes. I want to thank my staff, Deborah, who's here? <laughs> Roz, Desiree, they work tirelessly with all of our grantees. Most, most of the ones here work with the city to make sure that our projects get off the ground and running smoothly. So it's been a long haul, but we're finally here. I want to thank the city for finally getting this one off the ground. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am so happy to be here today and uh, so pleased that um, the mayor and the city have um, made this streetscape happen. As Stacy had said, um, tenacity was really important. There was a lot of drama over the years, changes in budgets, and we're just so excited that this is happening today and that Rubion Construction is um, going to exceed our expectations and keeping this short and making it brilliant. Um, yesterday it was exciting uh, when I did a side by saw, looked at side by side photos with one from the 1940s when this neutral ground was put in. And I have a photograph uh, showing this first part of the neutral ground here, and then another one yesterday when I came out here and that old curved piece was just laying in the street. And so we've come a long way. Um, we have been a Louisiana Main Street for 10 years this year. And in doing some uh, retrospective sort of statistics, um, we had about a 50% um, vacancy rate on Aretha Castle Haley Boulevard, and we are now at 14%. There have been vacant lots that have been utilized. Um, the rehab of uh, over 28 buildings I'm still working on the statistics. And in terms of investment just in 10 years, very conservatively, it's around 90 million and only about 14 million of that is public. So huge private investment in this quarter. Streetscape is another huge uh, public investment in the infrastructure that we are so ready for now with all of this investment, all of the new buildings. It's gonna be beautiful and we couldn't be more pleased. So. Thank you. I'm just excited to be here. And back to clean up is, uh, is the mayor of Arantha Hassett Family Boulevard, Mrs. Carol B. Bell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything's been said. Community, culture, commerce. That's the banner and the umbrella that we carry here in Central City. And this project is uh, a testimony to what happens when people work together. 
um, Langston Hughes tells us to hold on to dreams. I want to remind us how this got started. And it got started with a community dreaming of a day that we would get here. And that was 40 some years ago. And there are many people, Jim, uh, Stacy Head, uh, our current uh, uh, council person, and those in between who have been a part of getting us to this part. But it started with people daring to dream that things could be different and working together to make that happen. And so I really want to leave us with that in understanding what is possible when we dream together and when we work together. And we're just so thankful for this moment to be able to validate that and to now make you part of the testimony. Thank you so much. Thank you, Allie. Finally, for all those individuals that were not recognized today that worked on this project, um, we thank you for that. There are a lot of folks that, that actually helped conceptualize it. Uh, and then there are folks that have to actually get it done. So Dennis Rubion and his team the folks will be out here every day working hard. They will be finished on task, on time, and under budget. <laughs> and uh, and it's going to be beautiful. And then the community will take it, will own it, uh, of course, add value to it, and then we'll do it again. Uh, so let's go do it. And thank you all so much, and God bless you. I think we